YouTube, it's Faye. And for today's video, I'm gonna show you how to remove and replace the brake master cylinder on my 1998 Toyota 4Runner. Perhaps you may recall from my previous video that this is one of the items on the truck that I noticed would need replacing in the future. Not only was the brake fluid disgusting, but the master cylinder itself was leaking and that was just obviously not sustainable. And yes, I also did manage to get one out of the salvage yard, so that is a total bonus. On the truck, I'm going to start by removing the reservoir cap and the screen. So I'm able to get the hose of my Harbor Freight pneumatic brake bleeder right up in there and suck out all of that fluid just so that I don't make a mess because brake fluid strips paint really easily. Next, I will remove the brake level warning switch connector. Then to grab my 10 millimeter line wrench and this is what you always wanna use on this style of fitting, these brake lines. And whoops, I almost forgot to tell you to put something down to catch the dripping brake fluid. I was just talking about how damaging this fluid can be to paint, so better take my own advice here. Next, I have my 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench to remove the nut on the outside edge of the master cylinder. And here's my 12 millimeter socket on a long extension with my ratchet for removing that inner 12 millimeter nut or the nut that is closer to the engine. After removing the nut, you will find this little plate that you do not want to lose, so set it aside somewhere really smart. Now you can finish disconnecting the brake lines by hand and pull out that master cylinder. Next, I'm going to bench bleed my master cylinder. Now this would be a lot more important if you bought a new master cylinder that had never had brake fluid in it before. Obviously this one has been full of brake fluid at one point, or at least hopefully, right? Because I pulled it off of another vehicle. Now I do this because I think it's important and it makes my life easier. However, I do know some people who will never do this step, like never bench blade the master cylinder, just put it on and then like bleed the brakes for forever. Um, you can do that too, I just find that it takes a lot more time. So anyway, nowadays when you go to an auto parts store and you go to buy like a master cylinder bleeding kit, I was really disappointed at what they had to offer. The fittings that go on the master cylinder are all plastic nowadays, and also the tubing that comes in the kit is black, which is fine, I suppose, but I like to have a clear tubing so that I can see the air bubbles coming out, and so I can monitor like how much of the master cylinder is actually bled. So I decided to make my own. There used to be a kit that you could find at Napa that had a bunch of different brass fittings for the master cylinder and clear tubing. However, I looked everywhere for this kit and I found it for sale used a bunch of places, but like the listings had already ended, so I couldn't actually find it. So I decided to make my own kit to bleed. This is all just stuff that I had found at the Home Depot. I have this clear plastic tubing and then I also have these fittings that I'm going to use to put into the master cylinder. Now in order to determine this thread pitch I had found a plastic plug that fit in nicely and then I just lined that up and then I was able to purchase this one and make sure that it fit well. Now this style was all that I could find at Home Depot. I had one of these at home which I think would be a lot easier to use. So if you can find these, that would be better. However, I could not. So I'm gonna go with these guys. Then I've got just this Phillips screwdriver and I'm gonna put that in the end of the master cylinder and just push. 
in slowly. All right, and as you can see, I'm pretty much done because there are no more air bubbles coming out of the master cylinder itself. They've all pretty much worked their way out. So now I'm ready to go install this on the vehicle. I'm gonna remove these fittings and I'm gonna put my caps back in to minimize the amount of air that gets into the master cylinder. And of course the amount of brake fluid that gets out and onto my truck. So these guys I just had left over from who knows what. Okay, now you're ready to install your new master cylinder. If you needed to make any adjustments to your push rod length, which is probably not very likely, you definitely wanna do that now. Basically, you just want the rod to touch the master cylinder piston and not have any gap there at all. So just double check that upon reinstallation. Um, now you see that I have installed that little plate before installing that inner 12 millimeter nut. And now both nuts are installed and tightened down. Removing my little plugs now, which kept brake fluid from spilling on my nice engine bay paint. You can see that the brake booster right below the master cylinder has already lost its color. Be super careful and thread these lines in by hand first. And for whatever reason, I didn't record the final tightening here, but the torque specification is only eight foot pounds. So be really, really gentle, y'all. If working solo, this little bottle is super helpful. And then if you're lucky enough to have an air compressor, hook up the bleeder bottle to shop air and begin suction of the brake fluid, starting with the line that is furthest from the master cylinder, which for me is the rear passenger side. And then you work your way forward. So I go to the rear driver's side, then the front passenger side, then the front driver's side, and then I'm done. Then obviously you take a test drive and make sure that your brake pedal does not feel squishy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it super helpful. And if you did, then just let me know in the comments below and I will see you in my next video. All right, bye.